Father, that you would just touch them, encourage them, give them a restart, give them a refresh moment, fill them with that golden glory. No. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> We've got other things to do for six hours. But the reason why they bought glasses is because what would happen if they looked at that? Be blind. You would be blind. Do you know at the end of this verse that we're studying in Exodus 33, it says, Moses, you can't look upon me. My glory is so powerful. You can't look upon me. But, Moses, my glory will pass by your life. It will be that powerful, that it will pass by your life. It'll be that bold. It'll be that glorious. It will pass by your life. But you've got to get in position, amen? And you've got to be looking. First, you've got to sow. You've got to have a beginning. And then you've got to be looking. That's what? S-O-N. S-O-N. Amen. And then when you look at Hebrews 12, too, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that is where you're getting your sunflower at. Because if he tells us in his word he wants us to go from glory to glory to glory, that is to what? Become more of his image. He wants us to be like a sunflower. What does a sunflower do in the morning all the way to the night? Does anybody know what direction it starts in? It starts in the east. Plant one and watch it. We've done it. We did it one year. I wanted to, because I taught a little bit on a sunflower years and years ago. Watch that the sunflower's head. That sunflower starts like this. And you will literally watch the sunflower's head turn. Has anyone, do you see that seed that's in your hand? Do you see how tiny that is? Yes. When you sow that, have you ever seen the stalk on a sunflower? They're huge. They're this big. They're that strong. They're that powerful. If God can do that to a flower, and he's saying, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, what do you think he's going to do in our lives? I think we just need to be reminded of that. I mean, to look unto him. That's one thing Moses did in the scripture that we looked at. Moses desired to see God. Amen? Amen? In the midst of all that, he was listening to complaining. He was confused. He was questioning God. What are you doing? But he never lost his desire. Yeah. He never lost the focus. So whatever you're so, even though we love him and honor him and desire him, we're not under him. We're not really looking at him. We're not really surrendering the problem. And God's like, I've got this. I've got this. You get in position. You get in this better position Monday morning. You get under me Monday morning and hand me your Monday. You get under me Saturday and hand me that. I'll take care of you. And I began to think, wow, here I am just wanting to claim cast all your cares. Cast all your cares. But I think there was some humbling that had to go on. There's some obedience. You know, um, when I was pregnant with my one son, I had... Um, I forgot the name of it. What is that when you swell up and you get? Yes, yes, I had preeclampsia. Okay. So I got really, really big, and the doctor said, I want you to start journaling all your food. And he said, you remember Blockbuster when you could actually go get videos? He's like, do you want to go? And I'm like, no. And he's like, all right, well, I'll go. You stay in bed. So I was in bed under the covers, and I thought, I'll be here. And I had in my mind, because this is how we are when we're obedience with God. We have a second thought going on how we're going to figure it out ourselves, because it's not going on the way we yeah. want. So I was laying in bed going, okay, what I'm going to do is he's going to run to Blockbusters. It's about four minute, four minute drive, get the movie. By the time he comes back, I'm going to get out, go get the ice cream, eat a few bowls really quick. I'm going to wash it up, put it back, and I'm going to get right under the covers. Nobody's going to know. And I did just that. I had the biggest bowl of ice cream with the chocolate, ate it all, and got back into my covers, and I was laying right like I was. Nothing was changed. And we laugh about this to this day. He walked in the room and he said, what were you doing? I said, nothing. I've been laying here. Where were you? And he's like, you haven't left the bed. And I said, no. <laughs> and he said, well, you didn't have all that all over your face. <laughs> and I left. And I thought, what? And I went to the mirror. I cleaned everything. Work spoon and everything was put away. I had chocolate all here. I had chocolate all the way down my pajamas, but I'm sitting in bed and I didn't move. I didn't do a thing. And what I'm trying to tell you is when God's asking you to humble yourself, you can't play sneaky leaky games. 
because he sees the chocolate right here and he sees the dribbling. And what he may do is keep that problem there for a while until you understand how to get under the mighty hand of God. And I think that's us in our relationship with God. But I want you to see as we kind of come to a close that Moses, even when he was perplexed, he was crushed, he was confused, he had doubt, one thing that Moses did was he didn't lose his position. And you will see that in there. He was right under God at all times. He still had all the questions, just like we do, but he never lost his position. Amen. And so one thing, as we close, what he did say is, when he got under the mighty hand of God, remember he asked God to see what? What was it? Show me your what? Listen to what God said. And he said, Moses, there's one thing. You can ask me anything. And what did Moses ask? I want to hear you guys say it again. He said, what? Show me your glory. Is there any women in here right now that's thinking, I need God to show me his glory in a certain part of my life? Can you raise your hand? I just need, I need God to show me his glory in something. I don't have all the answers. I'm perplexed. I'm perplexed. I'm crushed. I'm abandoned. I'm confused. Just like Moses. If you're in the right position and we're doing everything these letters said, you have all the right. God is waiting for you to say, show me your glory. When Jacob's hope, hip was dislocated, does anybody know what Jacob said? Wait, say it again. He's not going to let him go until he's That's right. Jacob's hip was dislocated. He was wrestling with God, wrestling with God, wrestling with God, because that's sometimes how we grow. And finally, Jacob looked at God and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Until you bless me. That's the type of women we have to be. We got to get strong, right? you to bless me. I'm waiting for you to show me your glory. That's what it's got to look like. You're, you may stay in that season, that song that was on that we're going to close with. You may be in the waiting. When you're in the waiting, Lord, I'm not going to leave until you bless me. I'm not going to leave until you show me your glory. He may have you there for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. So important. This is what I see when I look at all you ladies right now. I see a harvest of sunflowers. If I could just put a sunflower on all your heads and just bring you over here for a photo. All of you guys have your own story. Each one of you have a story. And it might look like a mess, but it's a message. And when you continue to sow that seed and go through that story and go through that story and go through that story, God keeps loading you with truths. Truths from his word. When you go to Bible study, truths from his word are being hidden in your heart. When you come to church and you listen to your awesome pastor, truths from his word are being hidden in your heart. When you have conversations with some women and they pass you a truth from his word, it's hidden in your heart. Do you know how many seeds are in the sunflower's head? 2,000 seeds. There's a picture of the woman right now scraping them out. One sunflower. Look at that one little seed in your cup right now. That one little seed. That one little seed that is in your cup is the one thing that God is asking you to sow. And he is going to bloom you where you're planted. But along the way, you are going to gather thousands of seeds, which is going to be your testimony. You don't go through a test without having the monies. After you're done with the monies, it becomes your testimony. Right. And when
there's anyone here struggling with anxiety, whether it has to do with post-traumatic stress, an event in the life, if it's hormones, whatever, depression. Father, it's the enemy's lie, and right now, we are asking that we can begin to sow truths, seeds of truth, that you will come over, Father, and love them. Show them comfort within the church family. Show them comfort through your word. Remind them that the enemy can only lie. You have a hope and a future for them. I pray that they will go home and take this seed and write it out. Write a vision out, Father, to you. Make it plain on tablets. And Father, when they sow, you see that and you create the harvest. Father, I'm praying for the women here that are ready to sow a seed. Maybe there's a big challenge. Maybe there's something you've laid on their heart and they don't know where to go with it. If it's a dream or, or a vision that you gave them a long time ago, a vision for their marriage or finances, whatever, Father, I pray as you're in the waiting that they would sow this seed. Ours, and you know them by name. You know the seeds. You know what's going on in our life. And Father, you're just asking us to sow. And you are in charge of the harvest. So, Father, I...